Mikey's coming on. We'll have to wait and see how he goes the back end of the week. Um, but, yeah, obviously uh, we'll name him in the 21 and just see where it goes from there. Uh, George King got some limited minutes. How do you feel he came through the game from a fitness point of view? Yeah, George was okay. So George um, probably should have been back this week, but George, you know, he worked hard to get himself back ready to play, um, come back a week earlier, and the, the physios only want him to do one stint, so that's why we just got him doing one stint. Um, possibly could have gone longer. He thought he could have gone longer. Um, but, yeah, we, we weren't, was, was, was always going to be the plan just to, just to play in one stint. Fair enough. Um, Matty Stoughton picked up a fine. He's had to dip into his wallet and pay that. But um, how relieved are you it's not suspension, um, given the review panel have just decided it's a grade B offence and a fine? Yeah, I mean, I think I understand why, why it was a grade B the way it looked, but there's no doubt, you know, Stoz is an honest person. Um, you know, he put his arm through and uh, there's obviously a few in the tackle there, but, um, yeah, there was, as I say, I don't, I don't think there was any 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 intent and he did his best to uh, to get his head through, which uh, the players had end up going through. So he wasn't in that that crusher position where, where you can do some damage. Um you know, Stoz made sure that he wasn't in, in, in a position where, yeah, as I said, he can get injured. Overall this season, I know that obviously head contact is at the top of the agenda in making sure players are protected. Do you feel that these kind of decisions are simmering down a little bit and it's not as severe punishment as the start of the season? Oh, look, I think it should be a case by case, like, like anything. Um, naturally, we want to take any head knock or, or collision out of the game. Um, you know, us coaches and, and the players and, you know, everyone involved would be first, you know, ev- everyone would be in agreement to that. Um, I think it's, as I said, like you need to look at the situation and, um, you know, swinging arms and, and those type of, you know, those type of things that have never been in the game and they shouldn't be in the game. Um, and then obviously crushes, you know, if, if, if players get in a vulnerable position and, and there's no duty of care from other players, then, then I believe, um, you know, we players need to be punished for that. But, uh, you know, when, when they're genuine accidents or players are doing their very best to, um, you know, to, as a duty of care to other, other players, then we need to look at that. So it's case by case for me. But naturally the whole game, um, you know, it, over here and in the NRL are doing their best to minimise head contact, which, which we should. And anything else in terms of injuries that we need to be aware of for this one? No, we we came up came up okay. Obviously, um, <laughs> performance wise, wasn't great. But in terms of uh, health, we, we, we're okay. We just had a good good training session. Then um, the only the only one's probably Tom Opachik. He um, he's carrying a shoulder, so um, he'll be in doubt for this week. And was Tyrone May's um, we'll say illness in this case was that just due to something that happened on the pitch? There wasn't anything awry with it going into the game. Yeah, no, no, no. There was, um, I think, from the collision and him, uh, you know, the, the type of contact I think he put on. That's that's what I, that's what that was from. Yeah, it just shows, doesn't it, how um, how heavy some of these hits can be, and how big a shock it can be to the body. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we play all the, not we, they play. The players play the, I think, the toughest sport in the world <laughs> um, in terms of collisions and contact and that type of thing. There's no pads in this game, um, and you know, uh, I think that's a perfect example of of what the players go through and put, putting their bodies through. Um, you know, he put his body on the line there and um, I think I think we needed to do that a little bit more, to be honest. Well, I just want to ask, um, on a piece that's come out from the BBC today, I apologise if this means nothing to you, but a company called Polar Cap have been trialling a cooling method in rugby union and they've had a contract with Leeds Rhinos to trial treatment which helps... Um, with head injuries, head helps with concussion, and there seems to be some success coming out from it. And rugby union players have uh, spoken up and highly on it, including um, some Scotland internationals. Do you feel there could be further advances in rugby league with this kind of injury? Oh, look, I think I think we're doing everything we can to um, to minimise the risk of it, and I think you know we, you know, our doctor um, Gemma is is all over it, um, and and she she puts forward ways that we can do things better here and. Um, and, and to the game itself. So, look, I think we're doing everything we can. Um, it's it's an ongoing. It's it's not something that um, we know the answer, all the answers at the moment. Um, and then we're, ser- we're we're obviously searching for those. So, uh, 
as soon as you get more information and, and, and we know what's going to work, then, yeah, definitely implement it. Um, you know, we, as I said, we, we, we don't have the answers at the moment. We're finding them. Um, but it is a contact sport. It is a collision sport. So we need to, you know, find ways to get that balance right, definitely, because we, we certainly don't want contact to the head. No worries. I appreciate that. It's just a, merely a case of just asking if you, as a club, had explored anything that might be sort of left field if that's not the um, if that's the correct expression just to maybe aid medical advances that's all yeah no as i said Gemma's all over that um uh, i haven't heard of what you're speaking about with leads but something that we can discuss fair enough on transfers and you've touched upon leads ryan all departing is probably one of the biggest transfer stories so far this season how did that decision come about yeah, I think it was one for Hawley that, that, that came up. Uh, obviously, we were going to speak to Ryan around this time, around next year, uh, and he was up front and honest from the start. Hawley being Hawley, that's 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 what you get and um, that's what we're loving for. And he, he came in and basically said that he's got a, a really good opportunity in terms of life after rugby, um, and it was too good to not take up. And I'd said the same thing to him. He, he, he needs to do it because, you know, to get a, a five-year sort of... Um, you know, extension in terms of uh, life after rugby. Um, it's it's a difficult time for players, and you know I've been through it, and a lot of players go through it. Uh, so for for Ryan to be able to get uh, those first five years sorted off field, um, it's it's massive for him. And look, he he's a Leeds you know legend, isn't he? He's played at the club for for many years, um, but he's he's going to leave a legacy at our club as well. So um, as much as you know, it'd be sad to see Hawley go at the end of the year. I certainly know the reasons why he's chosen to um, to do that and, and, and we support him fully. Um, I know what we're going to get till the end of the year. There's a few areas that Hawley wants to tick off with our club um, and we'll do our best to um, to help him achieve those. Yeah, it sounds like it was a combination of head and heart then for Ryan, but he leaves obviously with a, a, a very good legacy at Hull Kingston Rovers. Yeah, absolutely he does. Um, you know, I, I know Hawley what he thinks of our club um, and the contribution he's made to our club um, to help us get, you know, put, put us in a position that we're in now. Uh, you know, we, we've spoken about that we want to be a top four club uh, from, from where Hawley first started to, to where the club is now. He's made a significant contribution to, to helping us, um, you know, and where we want to head to. So, yeah, he, he's, he's leaving at the end of the year uh, and it's a decision one of those decisions, as I said, it was one of those where I'd go as a as a coach, mate, you've got to look after your future um, to get a five-year, as I said, you know, um, guarantee in terms of work and what that looks like afterwards. He, need, he needs, needed to take that and we wish him all the best. What about Jack Broadbent then coming in? That was announced today of Colossus. How What's your reaction to his signing? Yeah, it's a it's a really quality signing. I think uh, for this time of the year, what Jack brings is a, is a utility value. Jack can play in many positions. Um, you know, with Corey and, and Louis Senior, so Louis a winger. Corey um, wants to play centre. That's that's a position that he wants to play. Um, at the moment, we, we're you know we've we've got strong depth in that position. Um, so it was one of those. You know, I see Corey is a Corey's an exciting player, and he's going to be a very good player. Um, I've said that since since he arrived, but. You know, some players, you know, are patient in terms of um, they're happy to bide their time, work hard, um, and then and then possibly play another position. Corey preferred to play centre, and again, he's one of those where I won't stand in his way because he's a talented player. Um, he definitely needs to be playing, and and he gets that opportunity at Cass. So, you know, that they'll they'll guarantee him that centre spot. Um, and again, I'm not going to hold someone back that. Um, that can be in that position. Um, it's just it's not it's not good for 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 Corey, um, and obviously it's not going to be good for us as well. So, um, you know, I wish them both all the best, um, you know, for the rest of the season. But yeah, Jack's Jack's going to be um, uh, give us good depth in terms of six, uh, one, three, two, you know, in those sort of positions. You've highlighted lots of positions there for Jack. Which do you feel best suits in the Old Kingston Rovers if you had to pick one? Oh, look, the, the reason why I've got Jack is because I'm not going to pinpoint one as such. You know, we've got at the moment that we, we believe what our 17 looks like. Um, you know, we're in a position at the moment, uh, you know, a strong position in terms of players available. Um, so Jack knows that he's, he's come over here and um, he's going to work hard to put himself in, in a position to, to be selected each week. And uh, we haven't narrowed that down. I, you know, I was up front with Jack when we, when we first caught up around, you know, we don't know where that looks like because 
as I said, he can play multiple positions, and that, that was the attraction to get Jack. Um, he's a talent, there's no doubt about that. He's a talented kid. I just saw what he can do on the training field, um, predominantly a fullback, uh, you know, but we'll put him in the centres, he'll play on the wing, um, we'll put him at six at times. Um, so I've no doubt that he'll pop up um, in various positions. But, yeah, initially, you know, the, he's got to work his way into the team, um, but he was fully aware of that. And as you've touched upon already with Corey Hall and Lewis Senior, this is a great opportunity for them to get more minutes, but also more more bedding in with a club where I suppose it be maybe unfair to say they might have to dig it out a little bit more given they're at the wrong end of the Super League table. Oh, it's opportunity. They, they get they've got an opportunity to play, and that's that's what um, that's what they need. That's what they wanted. Uh, you know, similar situation was. Um, was Sam Wood last year? I mean, Sam's a very was a very popular person at this club. You know, we all value what Sam did on on and off the field. Um, Sam wanted to be a first choice centre. He made the decision and got the opportunity to go to Cass. And I think Sam's been their best player. Um, so you know, it's you got to look at the, the whole picture. If if we if we held uh, you know someone like Corey back, it doesn't help him. It doesn't help us. He's got an opportunity to go play now and um, show how talented he is. And 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 you know, Cass will. Um, you know, Cass will see that. On to Wigan then, a team full of talent like yourselves. How do you stop Liam Marshall and those around him because he's in red hot form at the moment? Yeah, there's, there's probably too many to go through, but, you know, with, with Wigan, I mean, I, I speak about Wigan most press conferences and, um, you know, I admire what Wigan do. It's probably not a week to do that. We're playing against them this week. So, you know, after after our performance last week, it's a matter of focusing on what we can control because um, if we deliver what we did, delivered last week, um, it's not going to be anywhere good enough. So we're looking for uh, a, a far better performance this week. What's the biggest fix-up been for you in training so far, given it is the start of the week. What's been the main focus? Uh, yeah, there's a lot to be honest. So we've, we've narrowed it down. Uh, I won't go into that, but we, we didn't. We weren't good in one area last week. That's that's plain and simple. Um, you know, we played against a very good team who who won the fundamentals of the game. They valued the fundamentals of the game far more than what we did in terms of running hard, getting off the line, wanting to hit some people. Um, but just your core skill, skill as well, we, we were poor in that area. So, you know, we need to get that right first and then we can worry about um, the flow and effect on the, off the back of that. Uh, but we've narrowed it down. We, we know what we need to work on this week and, uh, and we'll do that. Reality check would probably be a too strong a phrase, but with the fixtures that you've got coming up, you going up against teams that are challenging for the top end of the table, does it refocus the mind slightly when they take to the field? Sorry, when you say refocus and one? Just to, I suppose, you've had that result, 36-6, you know what can happen negatively. Does that maybe just help concentrate the mind in that aspect of the game, I suppose? Oh, I think, I mean, when you play quality teams, you need to... Uh, you need to be very good in, in, in a lot of areas of your game. Um, you need to be very good in, in areas that you value. And as I said before, we weren't. Um, so that, hence the 36-6 score. Uh, so we'll, we'll go back to focusing on being very good in the areas that we value. Um, and if we do that, then, then you give yourselves a chance against um, you know, quality teams. Uh, the, other, the other thing is as well, you, you need to be prepared to do it for 80 minutes. You can't think you're going to be able to play a half a game. Like we, there was a few times uh, we played here and, you know, the score or the result uh, or the score was, you know, um, in favour to us at half time, well in favour to us, probably didn't go on within the second half. You can't do that against these, you know, the best teams in the competition. So we had our, our negative half, the first, uh, the, the, the first half of last week, you know, found ourselves 20-odd points down. Um, we still believe that we could come back. There's no doubt about that at half time. But, again, you're playing against a quality team. And the way it was sort of, uh, we had that ding dong in the in the, in the second twenty odd minutes of the second half. That's what we needed for majority of the game. They scored two late tries, which was disappointing. Um, but you can handle, you know, when you get beat by twelve points, you've been in the fight. But you know, to put it simple, we, we weren't in the fight last week, and and we know that, um, and we know we've got to be better. In terms of compar comparisons to the, the big playoff game, of course, last year between these two sides. Where do you think Hulk are now in comparison to before? I'll let you know after this week. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and I appreciate this topic has been raised various times and it might make me sound like a broken record. But when 
you've got a team of Hulkar with Wiggins caliber, people are expecting a close game. Does the kicking situation, the conversion rate, come into focus a little bit if you end up on the back end of the result, given you've, I think it's 40 conversions, 22 completed from a possible 40? Yeah, I think, I think kicking in general is massive in these big games, whether it's goal kicking, last plays, uh, it's, it's a focus for... Uh, for us, there's no doubt we want to be we, we want to have um, you know good last play finishes, but also obviously you want to be converting four to six. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, of course you, you want you want to be um, effective with with kicking, but but I'm talking about end of sets as well. When you're playing big games and you play against the quality teams, um, your end of sets are, are, are just as important as as making those six um, or four points in a six. Lovely. Thank you. Where are all my questions? Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Hi, Will. How are you doing? Yeah, good, mate. How are you, mate? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Um, just on sort of the, re- the reaction you want this week, it, I think in professional sport, we can all get to a high when a team wins and get carried away, and then we can maybe be t- too cynical and too negative after a loss. And the, the key's remaining somewhere in the le- in, in the middle of that, I suppose. Um, obviously, this period has been described as a, 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 a not a defining one, but one where we'll, we'll understand more about Hulk and where they are. It kind of falls in line with you getting to round 10, which is what you've always said. So after what happened last week, and I know you didn't get the performance you wanted, how important is it that, if nothing else, there's that demonstration that you can play ultimately the benchmark team, compete, potentially win, um, but you know, be right in that mix and sort of just showcase that you are among that mix of teams, among those contenders. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think firstly, when you're set around the highs and lows, like w- with us, we want our reviews to be similar, whether we win or lose. Naturally, you have some um, some honest conversations, and we, we certainly had those today. Uh, but we don't want to get too low as well um, after one loss. And on the flip side, like you said, when when, when you're winning games, um, you know we had that winning streak. We, we didn't want to go too too high as well. So we, we definitely try and find that balance. But I think it's about being honest and um, you know and upfront about performances because at the end of the day, like we uh, you know we we play extremely well and lose. Um, and re- you know rugby league and sport in general is, is resu- results driven. I get all that, but uh, you know when you're playing the best teams in the competition. And, 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 you, and you play well and you lose, well, there's, there's a lot to build off off that. Naturally, if it's sudden death, totally different. <laughs> You've got to win. Um, but last week, you know, we weren't in the fight, so we need to be honest with that. Um, and we know why we weren't. We, As I said, the areas that we value, we weren't we weren't good at. So this week is about just going back and, and, and being us. I know we, we speak about that a fair bit, but that's, that's what we do focus on. We focus on uh, what we can control. And there were certainly some choices that we made last week that – um, that weren't, yeah. Again, we, we, we weren't us. So yeah, we, we need to uh, we need to be better in a lot of areas this week. But we're certainly not getting too too down or or putting too much pressure on ourselves around games ahead and and what we've got. You got to play every team in the competition. We, we've just got a, a block of four um, or five, whatever it is that that we've got. You know, the top four teams. So regardless whether that was every third game or every second game or you've got them four weeks down the track, I don't mind it because it gives you, um, you know, a really good understanding of where you're at. Um, and, and as I said, there's no better way for, to um, to respond, you know, to, to what happened last week by playing against the, the champions. You said you've always said that honesty and transparency is massive for you um, in your coaching um, philosophy and – you said that you'd be asking for feedback from the players. You know, you'd be giving them feedback, but you'd want feedback from them. I know you just said, you know, some choices you made, which is that's when it starts becoming a bit um, upsetting for a coach if the choices aren't, aren't right, that you're not seeing the choices that you want the players to make. So what, without going into specifics and telling too much, what sort of feedback have the players given to you as to why Saturday looked like it did? Oh, look, I think... Um... First and foremost, like when when we have losses like that, it's it's us as coaches, as staff, we're responsible um, just as much as the players. And and me being the head coach, you know, that's 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 an area that, that I'll look at, um, 
you know, internally, what, what can I do better? What did we do well? What, what didn't we do so well? It was one of those where we all agreed that, you know, prep was, was quite good. Um, there's, you know, a couple of things that we, we probably could fine tune a little bit, which we will next time. Um, you know, we, we, the players prepared extremely well. They, they train well during the week. Um, and we just had a bad day. That's, that's, that's plain and simple. We, we had a bad day. And I say we, we were all one. We had a bad day. So the players have owned, you know, what they did on the field. Um, staff, what we can do better. We, we've had an internal chat of, you know, and, and nothing major at all. It's just about fine tuning. Um, but staying consistent with, with what we do. And that's, that's the key. You know, we always speak about our best and worst not being too far away. That's, that's for us as staff as well. You know, it's, it's with our preparation, it's with, with our video sessions, it's everything that we do needs to be consistent. So, um, you know, we all, as I said, we, we, we just need to, to stay consistent with what we do, um, which we've done this week and we're doing this week. And uh, as I said, you know, we, we'll go out this weekend and uh, the key for us is, is to put a performance that, that our, our fans are proud of again, um, because we certainly weren't proud of what we delivered. And we, we had a lot of people come over uh, you know, and it's okay if you, if you get beat, but you're in the fight. And when I say it's okay, it's not it's not what you want, but fans can handle that. And you know, the, the ones that pay their hard-earned money to go over there and support their team. Um, so we we let a few people down last weekend, but you know, as I said, we'll come come here on Friday and and and, and put in a good performance for them. And just quickly, I don't think you answered our questions on this on Saturday, but Oli Gildar. Um, You'd mentioned that Tom's got the shoulder. Is Ollie good to go, obviously, in the 21? Is he, is he at a point where he's comfortable, he's happy, confident to, to get back on the field? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Ollie, um, just we, we didn't pick Ollie last week. Purely, uh, Tom had been in the team pretty much for four weeks. We'd had, we'd had four wins. It's very hard to, to make a change um, when Tom was doing his job. Um, Ollie understands that. So, you know, uh, unfortunately for, for Tom this week with his shoulder, um, it's more than likely that he won't play. And, um, Gilly gets his opportunity again. So, um, yeah, so Ollie was okay. Ollie travels with, with us last week. Um, he's he's ready to go. Brilliant. Cheers, Willie. Cheers, mate. Hey, Willie. How are you doing? Hey, mate. How are you, James? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, just going back to that Catalan game, uh, game sorry, it's, it's beating these top sides away from home and mental barrier you need to overcome if, if you're going to be successful. Yeah, I mean, of course it is. We we need to you need to be the best, whether it's at home or away. Um, I think that's our next progression. You know, like we've um, we've come a long way. There's no doubt about that. But we're as I've said it many times. We're not where we want to be. And um, how do I know that? Is because you know we've 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 struggled to go to Catalans and and beat them over there. So to 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 be there at the end of the year, um, you know, we went too far last year. But to be there and to win that silverware and all that, you need you need to be the best teams away, um, and that's our that's our next progression is 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 going to Catalans and putting in a better performance to put us in the position to win. Um, but yeah, yeah, it is it is we we need to go there and um, and beat the best teams at their their home ground. Yeah, some people can see we're going to almost dancing, but for you, is it is it the perfect fixture to see what kind of response you're going to get from your side? Yeah, I think it, I said it straight after the game. Like we're, we're not going to get a better. Um, opportunity, you know, we we could play teams um, who aren't going so well at the moment. Come 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 here and win on on Friday night, um, and then it sort of gets, you know, um, we could be in the same position in a couple of weeks' time, and we've got to go away to Wigan or or whoever it may be. Um, but to be able to come back home and play against the champions um, is is what you want. It's you know, it's it players should get excited about that because it's it's an opportunity. I see it as a real opportunity. Um, you know, if we, if we play the way we we can play, and uh, you know, we, we we played some really good footy this year. If we, if we if we play that for a long period, then we'll give ourselves an opportunity. Yeah, just just finally on the the broadband swap deal, there's, there's been quite a bit of mid season movement since you came in. Is it is it good for you as a coach that the club are on the same page in terms of being decisive? Decisive and proactive in, in upgrading that squad. Yeah, I think it, I think it's um, different scenarios, you know, in terms of um, in individuals. Everyone's different. So, so for me, um, you know, someone like Lou Senior. So, for me as a coach, um, if we haven't planned or you know at the moment to to keep Lou for next year, um, I'm not a coach that just sits someone in, you know, um, in, in among in amongst the squad and then hold them back from getting an opportunity for this year. So for me, that's Lou, Lou's got to feed himself, his family. 
um, and look after his future. So, you know, if, if, if I can make a decision around that and help a player, um, if I know the answer, then I'll always give it. But then there's situations where, you, where, where, where you've got to look after the squad and, and, and the team first. Um, so, you know, I've had a couple that, that have moved on mid-season, but they've all had a, a reason behind it. Um, and, you know, Corey's one was simply that Corey wants to play centre. That's, that's it. Like I, I was going to, you know, I want to develop Corey on, on the wing um, in the pre-season. You know, a lot of young centres play wing first and then they move their way into the centres. And this is before Joe Burgess came along. I saw Corey, he's probably our starting winger if, you know, if, if, he, if he wanted that position. Um, he wasn't too keen on it. So then there, was, then there was a stage, an opportunity. I thought, okay, do we give him a chance in the back row? He was keen to have a look at that. So it was purely to get Corey game time and get him around the 17 and give him an opportunity. Um, but he really wanted to play centre um, and that's what he wanted to do. So naturally, if, if players aren't playing, what happens off the back of that? They're not, naturally, they're not going to be as happy and um, it can have a snowball effect. So then sometimes you've got to make decisions around the best interest for both parties. And, um, you know, someone like Corey, I've said it from day one, Corey is a, is a talent, you know. Corey can go a long way um, in this game if he wants to, but we need to um, to help him as much as um, help our squad for this year. Yeah. No good stuff. Thank you, Willie. Cheers. Almost, uh, Friday. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Hey Willie, you alright? Alright mate, how are you guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Just just one for me on Brian Hall. You, you talked before about his legacy. Isn't the isn't the legacy of Brian Hall almost like teaching the likes of Mikey and the, the young lads how to play in big games and how to approach big games? <sighs> I think, yeah, just his experience. I mean, Hawley's not massive talker um, around the place, but when he does talk, everyone listens. Like after games, um, he'll analyse the game and he's, he's, he's directing what he says um, and he's never he's never wrong. You know, he's, he's, he's always got a good summary of what's just happened um, because he's been there, he knows. Like we, us going to Wembley last year, he, he was talking around, uh, it's a long, you know, if we lose that game, it's, it, it's, it's a long couple of days getting back and he was 100% right. But the way that he um, explained to us beforehand, and and then obviously we experienced it. But it was he was right because he's because he's been there, he's done it, he's he's been through experiences, he's been through highs, been through lows. So um, so he certainly can can help older guys, leaders, and also the younger guys as well. But Hawley leads through his actions. You know, he, he's done it every week um, for many years. So he's still got. A bit left in the big fella. He's got another year at least, um, or, you know, with us. But then he's got another year at least with with, with Leeds. So we just got to get the best out of him. Um, Hawley plays his best when he's when he's when you challenge him, and so we need to keep challenging him. Um, because someone like Hawley doesn't play. You know, a person doesn't play when they're thirty six if um, if they're not competitive, and that, that that that's what he's very good at. So um, yeah, he's added a lot to our squad. Real. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Cheers.